they went up in a place like uh, Rome, and they were known as the Estoni, uh, the Etruscans, that was on this side, all right? The Underground Road, Railroad, the final destination was a place called Nova Scotia. All right, it's part two, because I don't know when it stopped, so I'm going to go back a little bit. Nova Scotia means New Scotland, right? When you deal with Scotland, right, an example for a lot of the officers like to watch movies, The Last King of Scotland dealt with the uh, Uganda. The Ugandans, right, who established what we call Kemet, a lot of them were run out of that area, and they went up into places like Greece, they went up into places like uh, Rome, and they were known as the Estoni, uh, the Etruscans, they were known as the Iberians, right, because they were being, they were being, uh, they were being um, persecuted for their religious beliefs. These people were all Coptics. Right? And then you know about comedic studies, know who the Coptics are, know what uh, what it's dealing with in, in terms of Kemet, right? Alright, now let's look at the extrusions. Extrusions. Huh, so this looks like an Edomite to me. So we gotta understand there's more than one melanated person. There's the black Edomites, which are Hebrew. There's the Hebrew Israelites. And there's the African people, or what we call African people today. All right, well, look at this. This is an Edomite. See how he has a full beard? See, that's our brothers, right? Jacob and his and their forefather were brothers. So he went back and, and got an um, an Ishmaelite and so the kid would look more like us so his descendants would be black so called black I don't, I, don't, I don't turn myself black a couple colors so you look at this guy this is definitely an Edomite this is uh this is Liberian. You see the afro? See that? Now the Iberians took over um, Spain. And that's why you get a lot of those Caucasoids over there. They don't have blonde hair. They got darker hair. They're a little darker. They got, instead of blue eyes, they got green eyes. They got big buds. They're mixtures with these with these people. Oh, my bad. So these same people the who run out of Kemet. My memory the right now messed me up. My bad. I'm gonna get back. Because the same war is still going on now. So these same Coptics will run out of places like Kemet. They established Greece. They established Rome. They established Iberia. These are also the Jews that were in, I in Iberia that were run out that they like to tell you were white. See, that's why I was trying to get at that. Those are not Jews. This is not a Jew. This is this is a, a, a duke and a duchies. Who are the duke and the duchies in the Bible? The Edomites. <laughs> they don't call us dukes and duchies. I mean, he's on there, but these are not Israelites. These are Edomites. People, and they were not. You don't believe me? Here, I'll show you some Edomites right here. This is an Edomite. He did that. I said, okay. He said, I'm with the Shakta tribe. The Shakta tribe. I said, I have a list of all the Native American tribes in there. I don't see Shakta. He said, there's a reason for that. I said, oh, really? He said, well, you're kind of the last of the black Indians. I said, black Indians? I said, wait a minute, I remember in the past, I hear some black Indians in history lessons say like this. He said, oh, yeah. He said, we're the Shaka tribe. This we're the Edomites. This is your brother. Macklin wasn't the only one who would recognize the name of the Shakta tribe. For the Bureau of Indian Affairs, Chief Warhorse and her tribe do not officially exist. They're not entitled to federal support. You see how our hair is different? We are punished today because we help free slaves. Okay? If my tribe never helped to free slaves, they may never would have bothered us. If we would have just continued helping Europeans as they came in, 
we were fine. If it would have bothered us. If we would have just continued helping Europeans as they came in, we were fine. Slaves, they may never would have bothered us. If we would have just continued helping Europeans as they came in, we were fine. You have to understand, when they came in, they, they helped the Europeans. And after the war and you were set free, or at the end of the war and you were about to be set free, they helped you. So the, so the government does not recognize them no longer and they do not get any benefit for being natives because they helped us. This is Edomites. So when we decide to help us. Look at her hair. Look how her hair grows. It's different. Slaves, now we did something wrong. So that's why I don't have my recognition today. At the beginning of the 18th century. Yeah. Esau. Okay, now if you put uh, Esau Indians. And then I go Kataba Child. Hmm. Shit, I didn't pause it. All right, all right. So here we go. I found it. So Catawba people. The Catawba people, also known as Issa or Essa or Iswa, but most commonly known as Iswa. Catawba Indians redirect here for sports teams. Issa redirects here for questions. See Issa. Hmm. Okay, you know what? This is not. All right, this is not the one I found before, but here we go. This is another one, just to prove. The Chara people, also known as the Sara or Sara, were a Siouan-speaking tribe of indigenous people of the southeastern woodlands in the Piedmont area of North Carolina, named Sara Town, Sara Mountain, east of Pilot Mountain, and north of Yadkin River. Remember, Sara is their grandmother too. They lived in the village of near the Catawba River. So this this is the direct lineage to the Isa Isa Indians of Catawba River. Their first European and African contact was with Hernando de Soda expedition in 1540. The early explorer John Lawson included them in larger est Eastern Suean Confederacy, which he called the Esau Nation. So the Edomites had a nation called the Esau Nation with a W. After attacks in the late 17th century and early 18th century, they moved to the southeast around the PD River where the Chera name became more widely used. They became extinct as a tribe, although some descendants survived as a remnant peoples. What are we, the remnants? Remnants, Sarah, originally known as Sarah. Then we get our name from Sarah, Israel, Israel. There's a bunch of different terms it could be. Yes, sir, L could be, but Sarah is right here. Sarah, Chara, Sarah, Chara. Ladies and gentlemen, the name they call themselves is lost to history, but the Cherokee called them Anusabaki and the Catawba Sarah. So the Cherokee called was calling them this Ani Subai. 
So, scholars have conflicted theories of the his tribe, its history, and its relation to other tribes. So, uh, I just it said they they related to the Mississippian culture. So maybe the Mississippi culture could be e Esau, Edomites. So here you go. So the Lawson family, those are Edomites. Indian Tom Lawson. This is like, so that was letters trying to show that they're Native Americans, but the government wouldn't accept it because of, remember I showed you the video, they tried to help us after a while, they felt guilty, and they got punished for it. See how Esau is interchangeable as a last and a first name? This is the Edomites, the black Edomites we hear about, Liberians, you know, all these different people. Okay, let's get this out of here, man. Let's take it to the shit. These tribes are known as the, Mari uh, the Marini and the Manduvi. You can look these tribes up. These tribes fled all the way up into France and places like that, all the way over to the uh, England, right? And eventually they came through Greenland and they established their first uh, homeland in the Americas in a place called Nova Scotia. Now, Nova Scotia means new dark lands. Kemet is what? The dark lands, right? No, Scotland is the dark lands. Scott is come from the word scorch. Scorch, as in blackened, right? So now when you're dealing with the term Scott, Scott means dark. So when we talk about Anne Scott, who was the mother of King James, Scott is not a name, it's a title. See, a lot of the things we don't understand is that what we think of our surnames are just uh, descriptive titles, meaning Europeans, when they named things or they, they designated things, it was either uh, descriptive, locational, right, or functional. So you have names like Miller, right, because those families worked at mills. You have names like Taylor, because those families made clothing. You have people who are known as fishers, because when they encountered these people, they encountered them on the waters, and they were fishing. So they called the people fishers. You have families named rivers. Why? Because when they encountered these families, when they came here, they named them according to their location place, right? So you have family names like Hill, right? Family names like my family, which is Rock, right? When you start to deal with the when you start to deal with the real uh, understanding of languages, you understand that a lot of the people who, what we assume are surnames, are really descriptive terms given to the people, right? So I could go deeper in it and start breaking it down from the language of my people. Now, I understand. We all hate our slave names. Oh, it's a slave name. Mine is a slave name, but... A lot of you guys don't have slave names. They took your names and they used your names from what your family was doing. And they built debt and and profit off of your name. And they make you hate your own name. Or your own titles. They make you they make you separate yourself from your titles, yourself, your family, your culture, and your land. You're not American, they tell you. You're from somewhere else. You have no right to. And you get in fights. Get the fuck out of Africa. Leave it. Get out of here. This is America. <laughs> but then the original definition of American is copper colored. They're not copper colored. Which you know, we call our language Lenape because the language is synonymous with the people. Right? But when they steal your language, and they steal your identity, what happens is you start to revert and you start to use different names, identities for yourself. One of the first names that we reverted to, right, and I can, I'm speaking for those of us in Lenape Hoking, which is all of New Jersey, the five boroughs, eastern Pennsylvania, and northern Delaware, all right? So all the people within that territory who lost their tribal identity, 
started to refer to itself as Moors. Yeah. Because Moor is a general title that references seafaring indigenous nations. Right? It doesn't mean Morocco. Somebody from Morocco is not a Moor, he's a Moroccan. Somebody from Mauritania is not a Moor, he's a Mauritanian. If that, if, if that concept was valid, then some, if Morocco is short from, if more is short from Morocco, then the concept of a more would be what we call ourselves because we come from America, right? So for somebody to start talking about, like, more is not a nationality, right? More come out of a function. It come out of an action. Mooring is, is steering. In order to moor, moor a ship, you're guiding a ship, right? More, who, who was the person when uh, Columbus sailed here, who guided his ship? Pedro the Moor. Moor is a function, just like Taylor is a function, just like Smith is a function. But the Europeans, when they encountered the original Moors, right, they were all melanated people. So through association, Moor became dark. But it's not what it means. Connotatively, it means navigator. That's what it means. But you're going to deal with people who are going to tell you more means this and more means that. And I'm telling you, they are not educated on the concept. Now, I will break it down for you. There's a tribe. Now, I keep telling you, you're not an Israelite. You're a Moor. You're not an Israelite. You're a Moor. You're not a native. You're a Moor. Moor means sailor. You were a, a sailor. All us were sailors. All us men are native people. For real. Called the Nancy Coke Lenape Moors in southern Jersey, right? For a long period of time, after they passed laws which denied us the right to carry out our culture, and our culture was simply farming. Farming and hunting. All this other stuff y'all want to talk about, it's just the show. It's regalia, right? Our culture was hunting and farming. When they outlawed that because they wanted to control our food sources, when they outlawed marijuana and hemp because it provided over because it provided over a thousand remedies for, in terms of foods, medicines, things of that nature. When they outlawed all that, we were forced to start dealing with them on, on their terms, right? Now, when they removed a lot of us to, the, to Oklahoma, the, tr the Indians that were removed then were the amalgamated Indians who were a product mainly of the Irish migration and us mixing with the Irish. So a lot of these people, that's why, that's why the Indians look the way they look. That's why they look amalgamated. And you see right here, this is amalgamation right there. This is Major Ridge. What happened was his mother had mated with a Scottish uh, um, trader who was a European. And he was born. And because there was a matrilineal, it didn't matter that his father was, was a um, European. He became, end up becoming the chief. So his thing was about am amalgamation and uh, becoming one with the European and to um, welcoming them and welcoming their ways. And then he was part of a Cherokee triumvirate. So triumvirate means um, a three party ruling system where three gentlemen ruled over the tribe and they would their will be enacted through what they said right so uh, was a Cherokee leader member of a tribal council and a lawmaker as a warrior he fought in the Cherokee American War so <clears throat> as when he was a kid he fought in the Cherokee American Wars against the frontiersmen but as he became the chief and the head he led Cherokee in alliance with the General Andrew Jackson. You know Andrew Jackson, he decimated us. And the United States in the Creek and Seminole Wars. So these Creek and Seminole Wars where you're getting destroyed, where you're banning up, different Cherokee are banning up to fight off these Europeans. These amalgamations were fighting against you. And using your own tactics and your own knowledge against you. They are protecting the Europeans. And what happened to them? They eventually got murdered, enslaved. You don't hear of them, his descendants. 
this is what happened. Amalgamated, they got the long stringy hair. Because a lot of the ancient European tribes were doing trade with us. Because when you, like I said, the term more is not complexion. It eventually meant that, but it meant seafaring nations. So seafaring nations would be any nation who is not landlocked and is on waters, right? So certain nations are not, wouldn't be considered more.